Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van and Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis, and today is August 22nd, 2021. Imagine that. I did another podcast episode yesterday, so this is a surprise for me and everyone else. And uh, this is episode 51 and the for a new season, season three. Uh, today we're going to talk about two things. One is the rotary dial telephone that was in everyone's household in the, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, even, even earlier than that, and 80s too. And I'm also going to talk about John's frozen pizza. So that should be fun. Uh, right now we are going to go into a commercial break. So this program is brought to you by Solo Tear Gang from Milton Bradley that featured Lucille Ball. And this is from the 1970s. So enjoy. Black Bart, I hear you're the best Solo Tear player in Tombstone. I challenge you. You're on, Lucy. Solo Tear, the game you play against yourself or someone else. Full house, 25 points. Four jacks, 50 points. You've got to play your cards uh -huh. just right to make a high score. Oh. 200 points. Only the ace of spades can beat me now. Aha. Uh -huh. Black Bart, you are now the second best Solotaire player in Tombstone. Solotaire from Milton Bradley. It's a real challenge. Okay, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial for Solotaire game that featured Lucille Ball. Uh, she did uh, four commercials, as, as far as I know. For the Milton Bradley uh, Company, she did Solitaire, which uh, I just played. Uh, it's like a solitaire game, uh, but instead of playing yourself, you do play with yourself, but you play with a uh, opponent. So you can try to beat each other to get, you know, how to get all the suits and of your cards. Uh, the other games uh, that she did commercials was Pivot Pool. Uh, pivot golf and uh, body language. Uh, pivot golf and uh, body language, you can find them on uh, YouTube. Pivot pool, no. I used to have that game. My mother bought it for me uh, for Christmas uh, in the 70s when we lived in the Roseland neighborhood on the south side. She bought it at Gately's People's Store. I love that game so much. You can still find those games on eBay. You know, they, they have them. I, I like to buy one. It would be a lot of fun. Okay, uh, today we will talk about uh, two things. One is my fond memories of having a rotary dial telephone uh, when I grew up in the 70s and 80s. Also, the second thing, we will talk about John's frozen pizza. So, the first off, we will talk about the rotary dial phone. I wrote an article about this. This was in July uh, 20th, 2020. And it's, uh, it was an article on my uh, blog, vanishchicagoland.blog, and it was titled, My Fond Memories of Having a Rotary Dial Telephone at My House in Chicago. Everyone at that time had a rotary phone. Uh, the the push-button phones came, it was introduced in 1963, according to some sources, and a lot of people didn't have them until maybe in the mid-70s, late-70s, not, not many, but rotary dial phones were... Very commonplace in, in the Chicago land area and all over the world. The phone consisted of a receiver, a rotary dial, and the unmistakable uh, loud ringtone that everyone is very familiar. And uh, you can download that uh, that type of ringtone on your iPhone or any cell phone you have. You know, just to old time sake. I, I had that once. I might do it again. You know, and I lived in three neighborhoods in the, in the Chicagoland area growing up. Uh, first, it's in the South Shore neighborhood. And uh, my mother doesn't remember the, the telephone number when we lived there. We lived there for about, uh, you know, when I was born, from about uh, seven years. You know, I was born in 63. She moved there in America in 1962 after she got married. She doesn't remember the phone number, but she remembers the the telephone exchange. And the letters were S O, and then there was the number. Uh, she had a, a, a old address book. I saw that about a few years ago, and it had listed all the people that she knew. And most of the phone numbers had the telephone exchange with the letters in front. 
that was a cool scene and all that. So uh, we when we moved to Rosalind in 1969, uh, we had our first telephone uh, mounted on our kitchen wall. I think the one in South Shore was probably, probably was in the kitchen, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember. And uh, I remember the phone number, but they didn't have the telephone exchange. The letters were gone. So uh, the area code was 312. That was for all over the, the city of Chicago. But I do remember that phone number. I won't reveal it. And uh, the area code of 312 was around for a long time, until 1990, when they added more area codes in the in the area. 312 is still in the Chicago Loop. Uh, but now uh, now it's 773 for the, most of the uh, Chicago area, like in the city. And in the suburbs, it was from 312 to 708. That was in 1990. And I remember that. And they added more, like 847 for the north side, 630 for DePage County. And then they just announced on the news they're going to add another area code in the south side, uh, south suburbs, you know, where I live. I don't remember what the number is, but uh, that's for new customers only. So if you get a new, uh, if you move, you get a new phone number or you get a new cell phone number, you would get a new area code and a new phone number. But uh, anyone who 708 still remains. So that that's good. Anyway, uh, the funniest things about when we moved to Ashburn in September 1974, we had two telephones installed. One was mounted in the kitchen wall, and that one was yellow, and the and the other one was beige and was mounted on the basement wall downstairs. And I remember that phone number very well. And, you know, sometimes we set the ringtones very loud because uh, my parents didn't have a telephone in the bedroom. I don't know why. <laughs> and... Uh, my favorite memory of living at that house, uh, which is funny, is when the phones would ring, usually in the kitchen, uh, it would be in the middle of the night and it would be one of my relatives from Greece calling. They don't know the time difference. There's an eight hour difference. And they didn't understand at the time that, you know, long distance calls were very expensive. They still are, but, but, uh, you know, everything's changed like that. So when the phone rang, it would be very loud. And I remember my mom would get up out of bed and race to the kitchen to answer. And that would be funny. So the whole house would be awakened from that noise. It would be like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Go over there, it's like in the, it would be 9 or 10 over there in Greece. So that would be funny. But that didn't happen very often. Maybe once a year or something like that. Probably around the holidays. And uh, also, you know, typically those rotary phones had long cords and they were very stretchable. And sometimes if the phone rang, one of us would yell, I'll get it, I'll get it, just like in the old TV shows. It's kind of funny. We didn't have answering machines then. We got one later when we moved. And, uh, you know, if no one was home, the phone would ring and ring and ring, you know, and then finally they would stop because they would know maybe we're in the bathroom or we're outside or we were doing something else. And uh, sometimes uh, when someone calls us and they reached us and uh, they would tell us, you know, we called and called and nobody answered, you know, and they would do that when the line would be busy. You know, we didn't have a caller ID or a call waiting, you know, none of that. And, uh, but today landline phones are there, they have voicemail. So that makes things a little easier like that. So it was fun with the rotary phones. Uh, when we moved in the suburbs, um, the rotary dial telephones, they disappear. Now they have cordless. Uh, we still have the landline. I prefer to have it. So, uh, you know, because I don't want to, I do have a cell phone, but I'd rather have the landline because, you know, the clarity is so, you know, of the phone is very, it's crystal clear. You can hear it. A cell phone, sometimes it's spotty and, you know, it's the frequency is not that, uh, you know, it's kind of staticky. 
So uh, one day we bought a trim, an old fashioned trim line phone, and my mom loved that. You know, she ended with a stretchable cord, so you can talk. You know, not in the kitchen, but you can talk in another room, like our living room. You can talk as long as you want, just like in the old days, like when teenagers talk. So um, we had that for a while, but then it, you know, it broke, and we replaced it with another one. But I like to get, I like to get by that again, the trim line phone. The funny thing about the uh, when I wrote this story on that Chicagoland blog is when I posted this on my social media accounts and on Facebook. I would uh, I would ask the pe- uh, people, do you remember your old phone number? And do you remember having the, the uh, Rory phone? And they say, yes. They type in the phone number, where they lived, and all that, you know, with the, with the call letters. So that was kind of cool reading all that. And uh, so that's, a, that's a all for this story. Uh, you can read it on my blog, and uh, it's, uh, it's fun, you know. And then... Uh, the standard phone for like in the old days was black, you know, those heavy ones like that. Like you see them in the old movies, you know, like, uh, for example, when Western Electric was in business and located in Cicero, Illinois, you know, it was a huge place, huge factory. Oh, it was wonderful. A lot of people were employed that time, but times have changed. So, and then you would, uh, when you get a new phone, you would go to the Bell Phone Center store, like in a mall, like Fort City, or you would buy no phone. I remember with the Mickey Mouse phone and somewhere in a cabinet. Those were kind of cool, you know, with that. Okay. That'll be all for this part of the this segment. Uh, the next up, I will talk about uh, John's Frozen Pizza, and I'll be with you after this break. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that uh, first segment of the my memories of having a rotary dial telephone. Right now, I'm going to talk about uh, John's Frozen Pizza, which a lot of people remember growing up in the late 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. That was uh, either you loved it or you hated it, but I certainly loved it. It was good. Um, I'll read a little history of that. Uh, I wrote a story about it on my, on my blog, VanishChicagoLand.blog. And it was called John's, the story was called John's Frozen Pizza, one of Chicago's favorite pastime meals. And uh, I will read the little history of that. And uh, whenever it comes to anybody's mind about frozen pizzas, I remember the old days when I grew up, there was uh, like, for example, Totino's, La Pizzeria, Saluto, Gino's, and Mama Celeste. I think Mama Celeste is still around. Uh, the company was founded by a man named Anthony J. Pizza, believe it or not. That was his real name. Uh, he made The factory was located in Chicago Heights, Illinois, on Joe War Road. I don't know where exactly. And uh, from reliable sources, they were made their ways to the local grocery stores and supermarkets. For example, they were a uh, jewel carrium. Dominic's, National Foods, Colony Foods, A&P, High Low Foods, uh, probably Del Mar Foods, Eagle, probably Eagle, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't shop at Eagle much. So uh, anyway, so I'm. Uh, they came in different sizes and flavors. There was sausage, cheese, pepperoni, and hamburger. I used to like that. And a deluxe combination. So you probably had sausage, pepperoni. Maybe hamburger. Uh, I also remember they, they they came in three smaller pizzas in a box. So uh, usually come out with three square small pizzas like that. Uh, my mother bought them usually at Jewel or Colony Foods, which was located at uh, Southwest Highway and 87th Street. That used that was in a plaza in hometown Illinois. That used to be a high low food store. And uh, usually she would buy sausage and cheese or cheese. You know, she never, she maybe she bought hamburger one time and it was pretty good. I like that. And uh, usually uh, we would have it uh, on the weekends, you know, like on a Friday, you know, and sometimes the kids uh, in, our, in my old neighborhood, when I lived on the Ashbury neighborhood, they would drop by or we'd give them some. A funny story was my brother. 
uh, my mom was out of the house and uh, my brother and his friends, you know, they were hungry. So, you know what? Us kids, we, we do stupid things. We listen to other kids. You suggested, why don't we get one uh, a John's frozen pizza out of your freezer and cook it? He didn't have any food. Okay, so my brother did that. But, you know, sometimes my brother was a pushover. <laughs> I'm like that also. He did it, and uh, my mom didn't like that. So, But uh, usually for, I've heard from people that loved it, even when I was a kid. You know, it was kind of, the crust was crunchy, you know, and uh, very hot. And uh, when I wrote this story, they, a lot of people mentioned that the best time to eat John's Pizza is watching TV. When you're watching a TV, your favorite TV show, you know, like a cartoon or a movie. I remember when I watched Creature Features on Saturday nights, uh, my mom would make a frozen pizza and we would have a, you know, some pop. We had Varsity Cola, Canfields, you know, Coke or Pepsi. And uh, the best pizzas I enjoyed was the square size ones and the round ones. So, and uh, usually it was sausage and cheese, you know. So that was fun. Um, uh, when I posted this story on Facebook all, uh, that year uh, or Twitter, I read someone's posts, and some were hilarious. Some people loved it. Some people detested it. Some say it tasted like cardboard, and they put and the tomatoes that taste like ketchup. Like they take a piece of cardboard and plop all the ketchup on it, you know. But it was good. I liked it, you know. I don't know. It depends on people's taste, you know. That's how it is. And uh, but if you want a real good pizza, I prefer uh, going takeout, you know. And uh, so you order pizza, it comes out hot and fresh and gooey. It's delicious. And uh, so, you know, that's a lot of fun, you know, reminiscing about the pizza. Also, uh, John's Frozen Pizza, they disappeared like in the mid-1980s. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they went out of business or they sold to another company. I, I tried to find information on that, but it's a no-go. And believe it or not, when I posted this uh, uh picture of John's frozen pizza that was the grandson of Anthony pizza. And he reached out to me and he goes, this is my grandpa's business. Thank you for posting that. That's nice. I love receiving uh, messages and posts from relatives of businesses that were gone. And they tell me that it's amazing. What uh, I remember one time uh, I posted a TV guide, uh, a Chicago TV guide that featured Faye Flynn and his daughter reached out to me. I said, this is my father. Thank you for doing that. I love reading about that. It, it's nice, you know. Uh, I still eat frozen pizza from time to time. Uh, the best one I like so far is Home Run In, which is very good. It's not like John's Pizza, but it's still delicious. And uh, I, ha I haven't had the, what's it called, Giordano's. They do make frozen one. And Tombstone, I think it's still around. It, it's okay. I like that. But... Uh, you know, when I post this uh, podcast, you know, I probably hear comments from people about their memories of eating frozen pizza. So it, it's it's still hilarious to read all that. Okay, so that'll be all for today. Um, I'm glad you could join me uh, for this uh, special episode. I talked about the memories of uh, having a uh, regular landline phone with a rotary dial. Also, John's frozen pizza. You know, surprise to me, I did another, I'm doing like a back-to-back -back podcast episodes. I did one yesterday about Creature Features. Also, uh, next month in September is Bozo's Circus Month. I will have I will have maybe one or two podcast episodes discussing my memories of Bozo's Circus that aired in WGN-TV Channel 9 in Chicago. That would be a lot of fun. Plus, I will make a video. And also write a story on my blog, Banish Codling blog. So it'll be a busy month for me. So it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, well, thank you for joining me. This is episode 51, season three. I'm your host, Pete Costanis, and I hope to hear from you soon when I do another uh, podcast episode, probably Tuesday. So it's bye-bye now for me. And now here's Brave Renner saying bye-bye for now. Take care, everybody. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye.